when we have to deal with sickness in our body and confusion in our minds. Sometimes we have doubts about God moving when we hear the doctors say there's no more they can do. All of us, every now and then, are faced with doubts when we're challenged by the crisis of our lives. One writer has said, he said, there are basically three kinds of people that come to church. Those who are struggling with doubt right now, those who will be struggling with doubt in the future, and those who have no doubts and will never will have doubts because basically they're brain dead and not involved with nothing. And see, I want to suggest to you, Pilgrim, I want you to know today, if you are serious about your faith, then there's going to come a time in your life when you've got some unanswered questions about the circumstances that face you on a daily basis. You want to be like a bathroom and ask the question, why? Am I going through what I'm going through? Why is my family being broken up? Why is it that I'm about to lose my job? Why is it that my marriage is on the rocks? Why is it that those that I call my friend are stabbing me in the back? Why is it that everything that glitters showing up ain't made of gold? Why do I have to deal with so much in my life? All the people of God every now and then have to deal with the issue of doubt and the question of why. Doubt doesn't mean, I want you to know, doubt doesn't mean you lost your faith. It simply means you're trying to figure out how your faith works in the midst of your chaos and crisis in your life. So instead of avoiding the issue of doubt, I want you to know we need to let God use our doubt as a means of making us stronger in our faith. In other words, when you flip that thing around, doubt can be the source of strength that can help you deal with the challenges in your life. I heard James Dobson once tell a story about a lady who was watching a butterfly as it struggled to work its way out of a cocoon. And after a while, the lady began to feel sorry for the butterfly, uh, so she got a, a, little, a little bit of knife and carefully cut the cocoon uh, just big enough, just enough to help the butterfly work its way out. And sure enough, the butterfly got out and stretched out its wings and began to flutter for just a few seconds. Then without any reason at all, the butterfly fell to the ground and soon it was dead. The lady discovered too late that the struggle to get out of the cocoon is what makes the butterfly's wings strong enough to fly. So without the struggle, the butterfly has no life. And see, what I'm trying to help you with in the economy of God, I want you to know, I've got a feeling that God uses the element of doubt in many of our lives like a cocoon. See, he forces us to struggle with the realities of our faith, not because he wants us to fail, but because he wants us to spread our wings and fly like an eagle. See, God uses doubt to make us better believers and faithful followers of who he is. I see, I for one, agree that the church ought to be a place where doubters ought to feel the most secure and doubters ought to feel the most comfortable. In other words, when people come to the church with doubts about God and doubts about their faith and doubts about religion, we don't need to kick them to the curb and try to hold them down. We need to help them up and point them in the right direction so they can find the answers to what they're looking for in life. See, I know that some of you feel like acknowledging your doubts would automatically disqualify you from the service of God. But see, that's a lie from the enemy. Because raising questions and having doubts is never a sign of weak faith, but rather it's a sign of growing faith. Now, you're not going to lose your salvation just because you've got some unanswered questions about the Bible, about God, and about the church. See, you need to understand, doubt is not the same as unbelief. Unbelief is a willful decision. It's a deliberate decision to stand against the truth of God. But doubt is when you're just not sure and you need God to make some stuff clear in your life because you've been catching the devil every day and you want to know if Jesus is all that that he claims to be. Doubt's not a bad thing, but doubt can help you grow in the things of God. Uh, one writer said, explains doubt this way. He says, doubt really is looking for the answers. They seek it for personal understanding. Doubt is never satisfied with a present level of belief, 
Thomas doesn't cut and run when things get hard. Uh, Thomas doesn't throw in his usher bag. He doesn't hand in his choir rope. Uh, uh, Thomas doesn't come off the deacon board. And Thomas doesn't stop counting the money. But, but when things got tough and Thomas had doubt, he stayed in the church with the body of believers because he knew God was going to show up sooner or later. And the other disciples, but look at it, the other disciples didn't condemn his doubt. Instead of fear and judgment, the community of faith became a place where the doubts were confronted and they were handled by the Holy Ghost. And see, what I'm trying to help you with is that the greatest picture that Thomas gives us is the fact that if you got some doubts, if you got some reservations, if you got some questions, if you got some issues, you don't need to run away from the church, but you need to find your way to the church house. See, we are the church. We are supposed to be the place where you can bring your doubt. We, we are supposed to be the place where you can bring your questions. We are supposed to be the place where you can bring your concerns, or where you can bring your issues. Uh, that church is a safe harbor for the weary, the weak, the wayward souls who are looking for the answers to life's questions and challenges. What did Thomas do in his hour of spiritual need? He didn't stay away from the church, but he found comfort and assurance in the body of Christ, he positioned himself in the right place, and when he did, look what happened. Jesus showed up in his life. And God is good at this day. Oh, that's going to help me just a little bit. He had doubts, but he made his way to the house of God. Well, somebody here today, right now, uh, you won't believe, but uh, and you right now, you know you have doubts, and you're not all in when it comes to this thing called God. When it comes to this thing called faith, and when it comes to this thing called the church, you got some nagging doubt, and because of your doubtful disposition, you are unsettled like a wave that's tossed to and fro by the winds of the world. I uh, see deep down, you have the feelings of chaos and turmoil in your life, and if you're here today and you're feeling what I'm talking about, I, I want you to know you need exactly what Jesus gave Thomas in the text. You. A personal encounter with the Lord. You may not see him face to face, but if you open up to the Holy Ghost, my God will meet you right where you're at and give you everything you need to let you know that He's an all time God in your life. If you have doubt, you, you gotta stay in the church. If you have reservation, you gotta be close to the people of God. Don't run and hide. Don't hang out at the bar. Don't hang out at the club. Don't hang out. But you need to be in the Word of God, the people of God, the place of God, to know and wait for God to show up. Now, y'all still don't believe me. Look at verse number 26. Jesus shows up in the midst of the, of the situation in the body of believers. And he says one thing to Thomas and the brothers. He says, peace unto you. He says, peace unto you. You got stuff going on in your life? Jesus says, peace unto you. Yeah. When everything in his life was filled with chaos, Jesus offered Brother Thomas some peace in his life. Do you know what I like best about this word? It's not it's what Jesus didn't say. He didn't say, Thomas, I can't believe you doubted me. He, he didn't say, Thomas, I'm hurt because you didn't believe the other disciples. He didn't say, a shame and judgment will be upon you, Thomas, because you doubted me. Uh, Jesus simply gave him what he needed. He gave him the presence of his peace. See, that's what Thomas needed on the inside, but he also needed something on the outside. He needed evidence. Do you remember what Thomas said about his doubts? He said, I won't believe unless I see it for myself. And unless I touch it for myself, I ain't going to believe it. So look what Jesus does. He does some show and tell for Brother Thomas to let him know that he's Jesus and he's Jesus all by himself. He says to Brother Thomas, put your finger here and see my hand. And then he says, put your hand in my womb and see my side. Then Jesus tells him, it's time to stop your doubting, Thomas, and it's time to start your belief. In other words, Thomas had a personal encounter with Christ that began to dispel all his doubts. Now look at it. Now as a result of Jesus responding to Thomas' doubts with grace and patience, look what happened. Thomas made one of the greatest faith declarations in all of the Bible. He says, after Jesus showed up, my Lord and my God. See, Thomas was changed radically because his doubts were dismantled, his doubts were dispelled because he had a personal encounter with Christ in the midst of his 
Christ. And see, the tradition says that Thomas, after he had an encounter with Christ, he took the gospel to India and gave his life sharing the good news of the freedom of Jesus Christ. Thomas knew what it was to have great doubts, but then he turned that thing around and he had great faith. And see, church, that's my word for you today. That's my word for you today. That sometimes your faith will ask you to look outside the box. Sometimes your faith will ask you to come outside the box and to believe some things that the rest of the world see, says is ridiculous. See, our faith may ask the question of what to do what the world says is impossible. Our faith asks us to do the thing that the rest of the world says are stupid. Because sometimes what the book tells us to do uh, just doesn't make sense. Uh, things like if you hit me on one cheek, I got to give you another cheek. Uh, things like judge not and you won't be judged. Uh, things like forgive and you shall be forgiven. Uh, things like pray for those who are despitefully using you. Uh, things like if your brother does you wrong, uh, don't try to get even. Things like if you keep your ties to the church, uh, you need to do it before you pay your bills. It doesn't make sense sometimes that we doubt that trusting God will really pay off in the body and body. But like Brother Thomas, faith begins with an encounter with God. And make no mistake, this story is about doubt, but it's also a story of God's ability to change that doubt into our faith. Because faith is when you are willing to embrace the doubt and ask the questions and face the answers. Our faith is believing something that's beyond our ability to 